How about the World Cup yesterday in New Zealand? The, the rugby. Rugby. Rugby is the one sport. I'll, I'll watch topless darts ahead of rugby. I don't really. <laughs> I'm not much of a. I don't know the rules of rugby. Well, topless see, darts American sounds football, pretty good. Actually. Yeah, actually, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs>
to this day that he likes it. But at, at the time, I think the reviews were confusing because the album I did called Field Day I was, was going to say it was Field was Day, his yeah. second album. And it was, you know, I mean, I, I'm sort of lucky because even my bad records, the history books are quite nice to them. Right. You know, even if they weren't successful at the time or at the time they were considered like a little bit weird. Now, you know, right. people look back at them and, and, and they go, oh, well, that's a good record. And I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, oh, Field Day is a hidden gem. You know, but the fact was, I did put this sound and I went, shit, you know, maybe Marshall's lovely, uh, beautiful melody shouldn't have this crashing fucking Because you know, the know. first record was more of a Buddy Holly yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, It was exactly. very organic, you know, the drums are pushed way back. Yeah, yeah, but not are, on my one. Yeah. Yeah, but so, so, so I made it a sound. much more... Yeah, yeah, that was my sound. And then I realised that um, that for me really to, to, uh, to serve the artist properly, I have to become egoless right and from that from then on I, I learned you know you, you're always learning you're always you know and, and and making mistakes can be very good right as long as you have the, the 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 thing to learn from your mistakes was that something you took away from working with brian you think who seems to i always feel like he's oh brian is fearless brian will you know he has he is all ego he's exactly the opposite really oh completely yeah i mean huh. it's all about brian and it's fantastic really? yes yeah yeah huh. yeah Oh, uh, but, but, you know, we could So, do it. okay, well, that's his personality. And I, yeah, yeah, no, no, personality yeah. is, yeah. it's interesting how, you know, if you're very, if you're lucky enough in any career to have a job that suits your personality, it makes it so much easier. And I think my personality is conducive to how I work. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've never thought it was that difficult. What I do is not difficult. I don't see it as, as a, anything other than ex and an extension. And it's all, it all seems very simple to me. Other people, you know, it's, so for a long time I thought, you know, I thought I had imposter syndrome. That thing of like, <laughs> well, you know, I should Why be trying I harder. <laughs> I should be trying harder. But in fact, you know, it's, it's um, I, I'm just very lucky that my personality enables me to sit in a recording studio and bring the best out of people. And, and you know, you speak to most people who I've worked with, they, they love their records and they love the making of them. People may not know what a record producer does. Exactly. You, you know, they may Could not you know how me? much pre-production is involved. Yeah. I don't like pre-production. Really? No. You don't like listening to the band, going to see them live to see what they... Oh yeah, I'll see them live, but I, 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 it, it's all smacks of homework to me. And, and I never did my homework. Interesting. No, I like getting in there and, right. and, and the magic will happen. Yeah, you know, you, you, yeah. t time and creativity are not a, um, a graph that goes in a natural form. Right. You know, so I, you know, yes, okay, it, that sounds a bit pedantic and, and, you know, record company people sort of shiver when they hear me like, say that. You didn't listen to the record before? Oh, I produced the Rolling Stones and never did my homework. Dirty work, really? Uh, yes. So, yeah, but, but that's not what it is. I mean, I, I, I believe in the power of a recording studio and I know that when I go in there, you know, I can make something happen. Now, you know. Do you have a favorite studio that you like to use? Or I, you... I've made the best records in the worst studio and the worst records in really? the best studio. So yeah. it's, it's not about that. Right. It's, it's just I wish I knew. Sound. If anyone knew, they would all have a bat a thousand. Right. And no record producer or no artist in the world bats a thousand. Right. So it's... Um, Except for Pixar making movies. They've not had one. I don't know up. about those cars ones. I don't think they're so yeah, good. Yeah, they're not as good. They're not as good, you they're, they're, they're not, but they've done well. But they've done well. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I, may, maybe HBO at 9 p.m. on a Sunday night. There you that's go. That's a pretty good one. We were just talking about that earlier. I would almost like, you know, that's a great slot to have. If I had any slot, or maybe NBC at 8 o'clock on a Thursday. Right. That's also a pretty that's good That's very good, yeah. But that's interesting. You know, I mean, look, you, I, we look at the records Or we BBC love. at any time. Oh, there Ooh. you go. Well, I'll give you Top Gear BBC any day of the week. Oh, I hate Top Gear. You do? Oh, Have you seen God, the American Jeremy version? Jeremy Clarkson is a wanker. Really? Oh, I see. I love it. <laughs> I know, no, but he's, he is one of those people. Yeah. No, I, 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 I say that because yeah. he's so... You're just, you're just upset. Maybe you'll get invited on now that you call them a wanker. Yes. They'll say, all right, little boy, get good. out on the course. Let's see what you got. There. I would like that. No, I know it's a huge show. And, uh, yeah. um... But uh, it's good to know <laughs> that Sorry, Steve Lillywhite likes you. TV. I, I was going to ask I you. I love TV. Yeah, do you read? Uh, are you, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, you football, make... soccer. Soccer. Yes, yes. Yes. Yesterday, I must have seen about three Premier League games and two Italian games. But how about the World Cup yesterday in New Zealand? The, the rugby. Rugby. 
Rugby is the one sport... I'll, I'll watch topless darts ahead of rugby. I don't really... I'm not much of a... I don't know the rules of rugby. Well, topless you see, darts American sounds pretty good. Actually. Yeah, actually, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, America, there was topless darts in England once. They, uh, yeah. You know, I read somewhere where that song wasn't a number one hit during the holidays. The, the fairy, tale fairy, tale of, fairy Tale of New York, which the, the, to, the biggest is, ever Christmas song in the history of the Was UK. it Greg Lake's ELP song, Father Christmas, that knocked it out of the box? Is no, no, the year it came out, no, it was the Pet Shop Boys doing a song, a really? cover version of You Are Always On My Mind. Wow. Uh, was the Christmas number one. The first year the Pogues' Fairy Tale of New York came right. out. Subsequent years, it's always been in the top 10, and, and it's grown in stature. Right. That song has become the Christmas, you know, the, the song about Christmas. And it has probably my favourite ever lyric. And it's, and it's a duet for anyone who doesn't know. And it's, you uh, scumbag, you maggot. No, it's not that bit. It's, it's so simple. It's like he said in the bridge, he says, I could have been someone. Yes. And she says, well, so could anyone. Uh, so I get a goosebumps you know, every that, time I hear that. I mean, that is so simple. I mean, because yeah. anyone could have been someone. Right, you know, right. So it doesn't mean anything. That's right. I, I have to give... Uh, Shane McGowan props. I think he's one of the greatest living songwriters. And one of the biggest underachievers in the world. I mean, the guy could, you know, he hasn't written a song in 20 know, years. So At sad. least he hasn't tried to clog up the world with bad songs, like, well, I, like I, I, some artists. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that. You know, today we have such a proliferation of, of music. It, it, we have, a, we have a, a, a glut of media in general, you know, with very few yeah. gatekeepers. You know, everyone has something to share with the world and not necessarily something we need to hear. So, you know, where are we today? Where at least in the old days, we had radio programmers, we had the John Peel, we had, you know, the voice of reason, we had gatekeepers that yeah. could say... You, you know, always need gatekeepers. I, I, I'm not sure if, the, if it was just the inter internet... Or fewer choices, perhaps. Well, yeah, 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 but, but I mean, I know in, in my... I, when I had, I had a sort of corporate job for a while, and, and I, if someone would play me a hundred demo tapes, I would just never pick the right one. I needed people, I needed an infrastructure to filter, to, to filter and give me five. Right. And when I heard the five, I, I picked out, you know, right. the good one and right. said, you know, they should be signed. Right. And, uh, and I think that, that, that goes, that's, the, that's for everything. You know, you can troll the internet and listen to music and you'll never find something because there's just so much to listen to. Exactly. It's like South by Southwest. You'll never discover oh, no. anything now because it's too big. It's too big. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. There, you, you do need gatekeepers of sorts. Right. And, um, and I think if you have, this is interesting, if you have gatekeepers, there is, there, is a, there is a way of monetizing it then because then people will have ownership. Right. You know, music, you know, I mean, you can say American Idol are gatekeepers and they fast track a whole career through a series. Right. That's the clever thing. Yeah. You know, they, really they, they let you have ownership of an artist. Right. Like, you know, like a 15 year career right. where you get to own the artist and love them in a matter of six weeks. No, no, no. Six years. I, I would say it's like each week of American Idol is like a year of a career. Yeah, it's hyper accelerated. It, it is. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's also the way the media is. I think the way our children consume media. It's very disposable to them. Right. I don't know if they're going to look back and say, that artist is evergreen. You know, you could look at the catalog of a Tom Waits. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I always use, like, is Radiohead the last great catalog band where they have a, you know, uh, <sighs> there's got to be other artists. I saw them on Saturday Night Live. I thought they were shit. Yeah. Well, I don't Actually, think they've I made a great record the for the last no. three, three or four records have been very, very stale. Well, they, they, yeah, they, you know. They, <sighs> I love how ambitious they're trying to be with yeah, this Yeah, but would the old Radiohead like the new Radiohead? Oh, that's a good question. I tweeted <laughs> that the other day, actually. Did you? I did. Did you get some good re You told me you weren't into social media. There. I'm at, at Silly White. All right. Yes. All right, there you go. S-I-L-L-Y-W-H-I-T-E, with a little at thing beforehand. <laughs> what the fuck is hashtags all about? I never do those oh, things. Oh, well, hashtags are very important because they allow people who might be following that hash code. So let's say it's you hashtag Radiohead, then all yeah. those people looking for Radiohead tweets will find your tweet. Yeah, but I don't want Radiohead to hear what I think of about them because I might do. have to work with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to hire you. They want to say, what? This wanker said it? Come on, oh. Steve, really, what are you going to do? No, well, it's true, though. I mean, I don't think old Radiohead would like new Radiohead. Yeah. Well, I think they lost the melody. I think a lot of bands lose the melody. It, He's that, such a beautiful voice. But it, does that beg a bigger question? Does every artist have a finite amount of talent that they can exploit? And then until maybe they well, work this is with an artist? No, no, this is very interesting because most, peop most people would say that their favorite artists made their best work 
between albums three and five. Right. Maybe. Early in their career. Early in their career. Maybe not their, you know, like you 18 two. years to make your first record. Right. Six months to make your second, then you yeah. can kind of figure it out. Yeah, yeah you can see this with, with uh, you two, with Boy and October. You know, October was a different, you know, I mean, not wasn't so successful. It was, it's a record for a different sort of mood. Right. Put it that way. But um, no, it, it's, so, so I don't know. Is it to do with your brain cells dying? Is it to do with an innocence going from your life? I mean, I'm always trying to, to retain something of that, you know, the wonder. I think it's, it's a sense of wonder. Yeah. You know, I mean, if... There is an innocence to it, though, when you're young and you f discover a band. Yes. And it speaks to you, that artist speaks to you in yeah, some, yeah. some profound ethos yeah. or pathos. I know in my job, if I'm not as enthusiastic as, a, as I was that first day I walked into a studio and thought, oh my God, it's Star Trek. Right. I'm not being true to myself. You know, I mean, mm. and but I've been doing it a long time. It gets more and more difficult as you get older to get that youthful enthusiasm right. for, for what you do. Well, how about it when the band has it in spades and they're just like, you know, they, and they can't well, believe I they're working to, with you. I have to go, I have to, and this is another one I'm, I just recently thought about this about, because uh, I'm about to work with this, this young indie band, uh, mainly a guy, but it's, uh, his name is the band name. And... Uh, you're not allowed to say. Uh, Oberhofer, they call. Oh, sure, they're yeah. they're on glass notes uh -huh. and uh, great melodies. Great kid, great musician as well. But you have to. I have to. You know, I I I I think of it like the life of a cat. When the cat's very young, it's like or a kid. You know, when a cat gets older, right. it's just sedentary. Right. And you know, we are like that. Yes. So for me, as a good producer, I have to be the speedy. You know, I have to become like my artist. Right. So. You know, next week when I'm in the studio, I have to, I have to revert to childhood. <laughs> yeah, a absolutely. Well, do you have a biggest career regret? Did you turn down a band? Oh. Um, or do you have many? Or? I, I've turned down many bands and, and many big bands only because I know that, um, I know what I do and I know what I can do. And, uh, and, you know, if I turn down your band, it's not really anything to do with you. It's to do with what I feel I can do with you. And do you have to feel like that, you know, what's your barometer? Song, songs first? I hate songs. No, never the songs first. Never the songs. No. The artist, the delivery, it's the, the Well, the actually, my first thing is the voice. The voice. Because is it unique this is, enough? Well, my theory is um, that a song, you can listen to a song four or five times and not be moved by it. Right. Then you can hear it the sixth time and you go, wow, I love that song. Right. But you have different, your emotions to a song change. Right. Whereas... For a voice, I can hear a voice, and I, I think this might be for everyone. I don't know. This is just for me. Right. I hear a voice, and I go, I like that voice, or I don't. And I don't think I'll ever change my opinion about the voice. So for me, I listen to a voice first, and then, if I like the voice, then I'll give the songs a chance, because I'm not that clever. I mean, I need to have, you know, and sometimes if you like a song first time, it doesn't mean it's a good song. It just means it's fucking catchy as hell, and it's shit. Just grabbed you right then. Yeah, right, but right I, that gate. doesn't, you know... I, I like things with more, no, it doesn't last. Yeah. So I, I you know, so I, it, it's, you know, and a lot of producers go, it's all about the song. Mm. I don't think so. No. For me. It's about the boy, I, but, but I like career artists. Well, there you know, you it's go. like, you know, wh what's Dave Matthews' best song? Right. What's U2's best song? You know, yeah. it's not about that. It's about, and then you have to know if you want to, you know, are these people interesting? Do you want to be in their world? Right, because you're You know, you're I mean, I don't like trenches. faceless bands. Right. You know, I mean, as much as I can hear a One Republic song and go, oh, that's nice. Right. You know, do I want to be in their world? Right. It's not a world I want to be in. I want to be in a, in, in a, in a vibe, you know, in something. So that's, I, I look for much more than a song. You know, that's why there's always going to be teeny bop and there's right. always going to be heavy rock. Right, right. You know, because it, it, it's to do with the, the, the changing... You know, I was very lucky with, with Dave Matthews' band. I managed to, to, to work with a band who pretty much every single teenager in the country, when they decided to go from disposable music to their first serious band, right. it was Dave. Right. Because Dave was, a sex, oh, yeah, absolutely. Dave was a sex symbol, but he wasn't, he was never on the... You know, but he was an uh, everyman too. You know, you could get into him on yes. a real simple level. Yeah, there wasn't a barrier of entry there that was intimidating. Well, exactly. Yeah. You know, and um, and he started out really grassroots too. Yep, they built it up. And when I, I first time I went, I saw him when I came over at Irving Plaza, 
there was, it wasn't so much even, and this was a very different thing for me because the gig was a long gig and the audience were talking a lot of the time. Hmm. And I was used to like 50 minute gigs, punk rock, right. everyone watching Rapid and then dancing. finished. This was a different thing. This was a scene. The band were playing as a soundtrack to the theme, to, to the scene. Wow. And I was walking around like, and I was going, there's something here. Right. Because, and then, you know, the band would, would actually allow that to happen by coming down. And when the band came down, people would start talking and there would be the thing. And then, you know, the band would come up again and people would get back into the music. They would dip into it. Well, that's a jam band scene too. I think that's part yeah, of the Yeah, but jam I didn't band. know what that was. I oh, just yeah. saw this thing right. and I... And I um, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. But this I was think. in 1993, something right. like that. When know? did you do the Lily White sessions? What year was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know I was going to ask you about that. Much bootlegged. The, probably the most downloaded song... Uh, album on um, on Napster because it was just at the time when Napster was was yeah, really coming absolutely. up. Absolutely, uh, tell the story, share it. No, there's no story to tell. I mean, yeah. you know, I was doing the album and someone leaked the rough mixes and I got fired. Yeah, you know, and they blamed it on you guys. I, I didn't leak it. Why no, would it, why not. would I? No, of course not. Why would you? Why would you mess up your livelihood yes. or your relationship I mean, with an act? Right. I mean, you know, it was. Uh, yeah, record, records were selling well in those days. Well, I mean, and Prince's Black album got leaked. I mean, a lot of things got leaked. And yeah. people were going, you know, and, and today things can't get leaked because artists finally figure out, let's release it the day it comes out. Right, right. There, there's, there's a, I have a lot of ideas about how to fix this, actually. Really? Yeah, I, I do, but you have to, it has to be with a big band. Mm. But I, yeah, anyway. Yeah. We'll have a private conversation about uh. that. <laughs> Bernie Tappan said that a great song is written in like 10 minutes. Bernie Taupin, okay. Taupin. Well, I, had di I had dinner with him once. Is it Taupin or Tappan? Taupin. Taupin. It's T-A-U-P-I-N. Yeah, it's um, it's he, an English thing. I said, uh, he said to me, no, no, I think, I, I said, well, what's your biggest song? You know, yeah. and this is a good little, um, this is a good uh, Story. trivia question. All right, trivia question, okay. What, what, what's Bernie Taupin's biggest ever song? You know, I want to say your song, when, and he wrote it, uh, I think he wrote the lyrics when he was 17, but it's probably like Captain Fantastic or one no. of those latter day. Not even an Elton John song. Really? We built this city on rock and roll. Oh my God. <laughs> Jefferson Starship. Yep. He wrote amazing. the lyrics for that I had no idea. Yeah. That's amazing. So, that's a good uh, trivia question. That's a good trivia question, that's isn't it? That's an excellent yeah, he told me that. Yeah. Um, yes. I, 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 it's, it's, hey, it doesn't... Elton John has never taken more than 15 minutes to write a song. Bernie gives him the lyrics. Boom. He sits there and goes, Daniel is driving to nerd on a plane. All right, okay. <laughs> or he'll go, Daniel, is... no, I'll throw it away. Wow. You know, literally. So, you know, that's a good alley rate Elton has had. How about when you're in the studio with a band and they're writing a song in the studio and you're producing? I think that's great. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There's no do, rules. do you hear I mean, it and you'll just go, wow, yes, we're going to use that. No, we yeah, can't use I, that. I like to think on a, with a good tailwind, I can inspire someone to be creative. Okay. You know, because uh, it's not just about making a record. There's a lot of other things that you do in the studio that, that you pass on. Found accidents just, and... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but it's just, you know, you, you just... You, words are difficult to describe. For, you know, it's like when I worked with the Rolling Stones, it was the un, most uncoolest thing to ever try and analyse anything. It was always just like, you, you just did it. Right. You know, and, um, and I think that's... You know, I have a. I learnt more from the Stones than they learnt from me, for sure. Really? Yeah, because they were not really firing on. You know. And they got to feel the. I mean, from reading Richard's book, I've never met him, but yeah. I always felt like he was just like, let's see. You what don't I'll need work. to meet him. Just watch Pirates of the Caribbean, because <laughs> it really is so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Digital versus vinyl. Um, digital every time. Yeah. I mean, um, in my early days, I uh, made records, and the, and the weakest, um, the, the weakest part of making a, the, the weakest link in the chain was always transferring it from your master tape to vinyl. Right. Because vinyl couldn't um, couldn't take the frequencies. The dynamic range. The dynamic range. The right. frequencies. The tops would tear. The, you couldn't pan the bass to the left because it would make the needle jump. And all this stuff. So, you know, I, it was always a compromise. You're a man ahead of your time. Yeah. Well, when, when people yeah. say, oh, I love the sound of vinyl. Well, 
you, you, yes, maybe you do. I can't say you don't love the right. signs of vinyl, but it's not what I finish in the studio with. Right. Steve, I really want to thank you for being on the show today. It was fantastic. Thank you, Dusty. And maybe we can do part two. We can really get into the minutia of your day-to-day. -day. Yes, because I've worked with other people that we didn't even mention. That's right. That's Good. right. All right. Thank we'll you. We'll see you soon.